Now, as you can see, both sets of people look very similar. Now, the theory going around is that Bebop and BB are this missing mother and daughter duo. My children were the um, targets of attempted kidnap. The momfluencer Katie Sorensen learning her sentence for falsely claiming a couple tried to kidnap her kid. And what did you lie about? That I was forced. Were you ever forced? No. Were you ever threatened? No. Some people will do anything when it comes to achieving social media fame, even if it means hurting others along the way. And sometimes the people they hurt are none other than their own children. We'll dive into the insane world of influencer parents and how each parent went too far for fame. My name is Visual Venture and I hope you guys have a wonderful week ahead. Bebop and BB. With over 8.3 million followers on TikTok and over 500,000 subscribers on YouTube, Bebop and BB are arguably the most famous mother and daughter duo on social media right now. Over the past few years, the two have been able to gain a ton of internet stardom through their unique content, which has been controversial to say the least. At first glance, the Bebop and BB TikTok account seems like it's full of your usual family content. But after you take a closer look, you might start to notice some strange things about their videos. For starters, both the daughter Bebop and the mother BB are always seen with dramatic makeup in their posts. And by the way, they talk and act. It seems like a lot of their content is scripted beforehand. Both Bebop and BB behave in very strange ways, with some even describing it as AI-like. This caused a lot of fans to speculate that maybe Bebop and BB are being forced to make content. And once this theory started, it quickly got out of control. Fans started doing deep dives into Bebop and BB's page and found a bunch of signs pointing to the possibility of them being held against their will. People started noticing that in the background of their videos, you could see a lock at the bottom of the door. Then they started zooming in to other parts of the room, claiming that there were cameras inside watching their every move, or that they could see other people behind the camera from the reflection in their eyes. Because in almost every video they've made, the background is always the same. Even the furniture and the toys are always in the same place place. And if this is not weird enough, there are speakers on the walls and locks on the bedroom doors. People even went as far as to theorize that Bebop and BB were actually Kate and Ava Baldwin, a mother and daughter duo that have been missing since 2015. Kate Baldwin had taken her daughter Ava and ran away with her, hiding from Ava's father, her family, and the rest of the world for years. And some started to point out the physical similarities between the two pairs, hinting at the possibility that they were the same people. Now, now, as you can see, both sets of people look very similar. Here's another example of how similar they look. Now, the theory going around is that Bebop and BB are this missing mother and daughter duo. Once these theories started to circulate on the internet, fans who believed in them started to take action. They wanted to help. So they would comment things like, wear red if you're in trouble, or put a green heart in your caption if you need help. Scarily enough, Bebop and BB actually did these things. In their videos, they would regularly do the action that the top comment asked them to do. And during their lip sync videos, fans swore that they were mouthing words like help instead of the actual words. After multiple videos of Bebop and BB doing these requests, fans were almost certain that there was something much darker going on behind the scenes. Some believed that the two were kidnapped. Others thought that there was someone else controlling them. In some of Bebop and BB's videos, they feature men like Bebop's brother or her father, both of which fans have speculated could be forcing them to make videos. Needless to say, Bebop and BB became the focus of social media's most trending conspiracy theory. And with such a popular theory being tied back to their page, it's expected that they would gain some new fans, but not just a few, hundreds of thousands of new fans. The Bebop and BB page was getting millions of views a day with curious TikTok users flocking to their accounts to try and be part of this investigation. But while none of the theories were ever confirmed, a new theory emerged from all of the conspiracies. One that seemed to make a lot more sense. Bebop wasn't kidnapped, she was being exploited. There's been some inappropriate videos of Bebop that make many people uncomfortable concerning her age. There's been live streams where BB purposely plans things in the background. A few of this 
conspiracy theories such as handcuffs. People on live streams have told her to touch her nose, tilt her head, or say specific things to show that she is in danger or kidnapped. And as fans started to look even deeper into Bebop and BB's content, they began noticing that it was primarily BB that fed into the kidnapping conspiracy. Rather than someone else controlling both of them, it could be very much possible that BB was making Bebop pretend the theory was real so that there would be more traction to their social media account. And once people started researching Bebop and BB's past, this didn't come as a shock anymore. Because before the two of them started a TikTok page, they were actually heavily involved in the child beauty pageant scene. BB had enrolled Bebop with a ton of kids beauty pageants from a very early age, getting her to perform and act in front of judges and live audiences. So already Bebop was experienced when it came to putting on a show. Not to mention the child beauty pageant industry is known for creating toxic parents who use their children not just for fame, but also money. So many began to think that BB was just exploiting her young daughter for social media stardom. And what further fueled the fire was when Bebop and BB finally decided to speak up and address the theories, they locked their statements behind hefty paywalls. But apparently now, after all this time, they are breaking their silence in a news interview, but it's crazy because they're making me pay. I'm sorry, but what? You have taunted people on the internet for years, but now you want people to pay to hear your story. The interview was eventually canceled, likely due to the backlash of the paywall. And the truth was never brought up by BB or Bebop again. But if that wasn't convincing enough, people also dug up past messages from Peyton, Bebop's brother who was featured in some of the account's earlier videos. In these screenshots, Peyton allegedly claimed that his mother had tried to force him to make content, which is why he no longer wants to appear in the videos anymore. Screenshots of DMs allegedly from Peyton claim that Peyton tried to expose his mom for forcing him to make content and that's why he disappeared from their videos. But after these screenshots surfaced, Peyton made another video addressing the situation and it wasn't what people expected. I lied and I hurt them. I hurt their business, what they were trying to do, something that they enjoyed and it was something that I shouldn't have done. It was very stupid of me and I'm very sorry to both of them and to everything that they were trying to accomplish. And what did you lie about? That I was forced. Say it. That I was forced. Were you ever forced? No. Were you ever threatened? No. This video raised a few red flags as people still believed that BB could very much just be forcing Peyton to say these things to save her reputation and maintain her social media fame. At the end of the day, none of these theories about Bebop and BB have ever been confirmed, but it seems pretty clear that BB is using her young daughter, Bebop, to make content for her own personal gain, and that she's willing to fake a kidnapping conspiracy to keep growing her page. And Bebop isn't the only young girl being forced to make content. In fact, there are some influencer parents who do things that are much worse to keep their male audience happy. Ren Eleanor. Before we talk about the disturbing case of Ren Eleanor, I want to thank this video sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder is a vehicle combat MMO game featuring over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships from early 20th century biplanes and armored vehicles to fighter jets and tanks of the modern age. The game's environment is beautiful with lifelike graphics and sound effects. Something that makes War Thunder unique is its intricate damage model, where every vehicle is broken down to its individual components like the engine and fuel tank. If a vehicle is destroyed, the x-ray view shows the exact impact point of where the vehicle was damaged and what components were affected. Not to mention, this game has in-depth customization options. They have an array of camouflage, historical markings, and decorations for every vehicle, including ones created by you guys, the community. So I have a gaming computer to create these videos, but even then, games like Apex still lag for me. But War Thunder is optimized to give you a lag-free experience even on regular machines. This game has a player base of over 70 million people that you can PvP. And if you're into military history, this game is for you. Play War Thunder for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox now by using my link in the pinned comment or description. New and returning players that haven't played in six months across all platforms get a massive bonus pack. That includes the Eagle of Valor, 100,000 Silver Lions, and seven days of premium account only for a limited time.
Ren Eleanor has become one of the most recognizable faces when it comes to child influencers. At just four years old, Ren is famous with over 17 million followers on TikTok and over 600 million likes. The account is run by Ren's mom, Jacqueline, who films her daughter participating in all sorts of social media challenges and in her day-to-day -day life vlogs. Her daughter, who's bubbly and personable, soon became one of the most beloved child influencers on the platform and one of the richest two securing major brand deals with companies like Shein. But all that success comes at a cost, especially for such a young girl like Ren. Because while many of her followers are just people who find her content fun to watch, others keep up with her content for more unsettling reasons. You start finding comments like this, and also comments like this, and even random grown men duetting the TikToks of the little three-year-old girl calling them pretty. Then you also find out that there are loads of fan accounts of this three-year-old girl. And yeah, this comment comes from one of those accounts of where somebody was saying that they were putting the photos of this girl on his bedroom wall. And with such a growing male adult fan base, you would think that Jacqueline would want to do all she can to protect her daughter. But instead, she creates content specifically for that demographic. More than once, Jacqueline has been the source of controversy for the nature of the content that she posted onto the Ren Eleanor account. In one video, Ren is just doing her daily activities. The video has been saved by over 14,000 people people, which is already kind of suspicious that so many strangers would want a video of a random child on their phone in the first place. But in this other video, Ren is doing her bath routine. This video got over three times as many saves. Jacqueline had Ren pose this way for videos on multiple occasions. The most infamous incident was when Jacqueline had Ren play with a feminine hygiene product on camera as if it were a toy. That video was saved by over 300,000 people. All these videos have caught intense backlash and have since been deleted, but that doesn't mean the damage wasn't already done. The comments on some of Ren's videos were absolutely disgusting and disturbing. And to be honest, Jacqueline should be embarrassed and ashamed for not monitoring what these monsters on the internet were saying about her now four-year-old daughter. And comments like that were normal on all of Ren's videos. It was becoming increasingly obvious that a big part of Ren's fan base were people who should should not be consuming her content. But rather than taking preventative measures, Jacqueline tried to defend herself and her parenting with this video back in 2022. Please do not mom shame me because we have different parenting styles. I look forward to making more videos with my daughter and I am committed to making changes when I turn my account comments back on. I will filter them to remove offensive comments and report and block accounts as necessary. Although Jacqueline promised to monitor the comments to protect her daughter, she didn't take action for months which allowed the comment section to grow into a place filled with disgusting messages. And soon things got even worse. On TikTok videos, there are suggested searches that pop up which showcase the most commonly searched terms about the specific account and video. And for most of Ren's videos, the search suggestions became topics like Ren Eleanor hot dog or Ren Eleanor pickle. Upon seeing these videos and these comments, a TikTok movement led primarily by concerned mothers started taking over the platform. This movement was meant to encourage TikTok to remove kid-focused content for the sake of protecting children and their privacy, especially from those who shouldn't be consuming this type of content. As of this video, she since turned off all of her comments, but that's all the action she's taken. Because since the controversy started, Ren's content has only gotten more questionable. But while Jacqueline may use her child to make content, there are other mothers out there who use their kids to make money in other ways. Jasmine Moss. Jasmine Moss is your standard mom influencer. She works a regular nine to five while also creating content on the side as a hobby to earn a little extra income. Jasmine is a beautician who posts content for her daughter as well as her day-to-day -day work on Instagram, particularly in waxing. Waxing videos have become a popular niche on social media as people like watching the wax remove hair quickly and seamlessly. It's part of the growing trend of satisfying beauty treatment videos like pimple popping or blackhead removal. But while her fans have gotten used to her posting these videos, they never expected that she would bring on someone new to wax her clients. Someone who is definitely not qualified. A mother is in jail after police say her daughter 
helped to wax clients at a waxing studio. Memphis police say that child was only five years old. On her since deleted Instagram account, Jasmine shared content of her daughter doing wax services on her client. In the post, she boasted to her followers about how her daughter had allegedly waxed 24 people in just eight hours. Several concerns came from these posts. The first being that the wax was extremely hot and not safe for a child to be handling. But most importantly, Jasmine's daughter wasn't just doing any regular sort of waxing. She was specifically doing bikini waxes for women. Not only was the young girl being subject to hot wax, but she was also being forced to get extra close with them to do the waxing. Once these photos were posted, concerned followers started to share these images with the police. The Memphis Police Department received several complaints following this post going live and they decided to investigate the situation. Jasmine was eventually arrested and charged with child neglect and other related charges with her Instagram content being used as primary evidence. But if you thought getting your child to work for you like this was bad, then you might want to brace yourself because this next mom takes it one step further. Jessica Gasser. When children have rare illnesses, it's a heartbreaking story, which is why it's no surprise that when TikTok user Medical Mama Jazz shared her three-year-old daughter's journey with a rare medical illness, she gained a ton of supporters. Jessica Gasser, a 27-year-old mom, would share content about her young daughter and her road to recovery to her 25,000 followers on TikTok. But it was recently revealed that while Jessica had been making a ton of content about her daughter's rare medical condition, none None of the videos had any truth to them. Actually, her daughter wasn't sick at all. The real problem was Jessica pretending her daughter was ill to get attention. She's been hospitalized repeatedly. On social media and in doctor's offices, 27-year-old Jessica Gasser allegedly claimed her three-year-old daughter was medically complex. But the Tarrant County Sheriff's Office says she was lying. Although Jessica's daughter was perfectly healthy, Jessica still did everything she could to keep the act going, including taking desperate measures to try and make her child seem sick or convince herself that she was. For the past few years, Jessica had been taking her daughter to several hospitals throughout the Dallas and Austin areas trying to get her a medical diagnosis. The affidavit showed that Jessica was being accused of doctor shopping, which meant going into countless doctor's offices and lying about medical history to try and get the results that she wanted. They're presenting a false medical history to a medical provider who rely on that history in order to form a diagnosis. Jessica would ask the doctors to run blood tests and a wide variety of other tests to attempt to fake a medical condition for her daughter that wasn't there. That way she could get prescriptions for the medication that she would show in her content and also be able to film her daughter during medical treatments to keep the light going. It got so bad that her daughter even had to be hospitalized a few times for these abrasive tests. All of these procedures caused her daughter to end up with several injuries. Doctors in Texas quickly caught on after Jessica and her daughter visited several hospitals and medical centers within a short time frame. Jessica had initially taken her daughter to the Texas Medical Center where her daughter was given a feeding tube since she wasn't eating enough. Months later, when Jessica moved onto a different doctor, they ruled out stomach issues and offered to remove the feeding tube because her daughter seemed healthy, but Jessica refused. That's when medical professionals in Texas began their suspicions about Jessica and how she was treating her daughter. So in June of 2022, the first report to the Department of Family Protective Services would be filed, along with a second report just four months later later in October of 2022. Around that time, many Texas doctors started refusing to run any more tests. But instead of stopping, Jessica just went to hospitals in other states. She visited medical facilities in three different states for checkups and diagnoses that ended up totaling over $200,000, all to look for medical illnesses that her daughter simply did not have. But all that money didn't come out of nowhere. Using her social media page as promotion, Jessica ran a successful Successful Etsy shop called Enchanted Tubi Tapes, where she sold custom designed tape for feeding tubes and other medical tools. The shop has over 749 five star reviews and over 3,000 sales. And like most influencers that fake illnesses, Jessica also ran a GoFundMe page. According to the page, all donations were going towards travel expenses to the Cleveland Clinic in Ohio, which she and her daughter needed to go to for medical treatment. This treatment has since been confirmed by 
doctors as unneeded, but Jessica had gone through with the GoFundMe anyway, earning $683, along with receiving a $1,638 donation from a philanthropic organization to cover both their flights there. And Jessica knew that what she was doing was wrong. During the police investigation, it was revealed that her search history was filled with things like is lying to a doctor about a child illegal and countries that take families on asylum from CPS. The daughter has since been removed from Jessica's care and is perfectly healthy without medical treatment. And Jessica is being investigated by the Tarrant County Sheriff's Office for alleged medical abuse. Jessica has since deleted all her social media content, but the lasting effects on her daughter cannot be undone. This next case is very different because instead of having their kid fake an illness, he used his to help with his TikTok thirst traps. Pepito Fonzi won. We already know that some influencer parents like to use their children for views on social media, but few manage to cross as many lines as Pepito Fonzi does. This TikToker known for his thirst traps and his gym content is no stranger to showing off his physique online. But things got much weirder when he started to show his foster children in his videos. He also posted another video of him showing his body like this with the caption, when she wants cuddles, but guess what? His adopted daughter appears. In his former videos, many of which are deleted, he would use his foster children, a young daughter and a baby boy as props for his videos. The videos would have suggestive captions or even actions which are highly uncomfortable to watch considering that Pepito is their adopted father. Pepito purposely phrases his words and frames his videos to form a narrative in the viewer's head, making it feel very unsettling. And the narrative he builds in his videos are highly inappropriate for a father to have with his kids. Kids. Some of these videos weren't just suggestive, they were straight up creepy. Now for whatever reason this man decides to stick his hand in the diaper of the baby and get out, well you seen what was on his hand and then he wiped it on his face. Not to mention that in the corner of many of his videos, Pepito would plug his Snapchat account where he had spicier, more adult content. And when more and more people started seeing these videos, they knew that they had to take action. So they started reporting his videos to Child Protective Services and the children were eventually taken away. This next parent also posted similar content, but arguably much worse because while Pepito seemed to only post questionable scenarios, Katie actually acted them out. Katie Boogie. One of the most common types of content for mom influencers includes doing dance challenges with her kids. But Katie didn't want to take that approach. Instead of dancing with him, she decided to dance on him instead. This type of dancing combined with the suggestive captions are enough to make a person sick to their stomach. But this wasn't the only video posted of this nature. Most people were quick to call out Katie for this disturbing behavior, but others, they thought differently. She made several dancing videos with her child. Now let's read some of these creepy comments that were left on her videos. You did nothing wrong. He clearly wants it. Unfortunately, there is no further news as to what happened to both Katie and her child after these videos started gaining traction. Jenny Popak. Rosalie Aritola was only 15 years old when she became one of the most famous stars on social media. Taking on the persona Jenny Popak, Rosalie would gain over 7 million followers on TikTok before she suddenly disappeared from the platform. Like other girls her age, Jenny posted videos of her lip syncing and dancing, but many people who watched her videos found themselves disturbed by the end of it. Unlike most 15 year old girls who did this for fun, Jenny clearly had another motive. She wanted to attract a certain audience. People found it quite shocking how Jenny was wearing bikinis and very revealing outfits just to film TikTok videos when she was only 15 years old. Despite her young age, Jenny was posing suggestively in almost every video and wearing clothes that seemed like they were for a much older age group. She was regularly seen wearing swimsuits, crop tops, and short bottoms in her videos and lip syncing to suggestive songs with vulgar lyrics. And many people who watched these videos grew concerned and for a good reason. Jenny spent a lot of her life on social media and with all of her content being this suggestive, they feared that she was putting herself at risk of being taken advantage of. In most cases like these, the parents would usually want to take action to prevent their child from being possibly harmed, but not Jenny's. They didn't seem to care. In fact, they seemed to support it. Jenny's parents are advocates for the type of content that she makes, often encouraging her to keep posting the way that she does. Jenny's mom, Maria Ulasia, is especially fond 
of Jenny's social media fame. In an interview with Bloomberg, Maria was asked about the allegations that were going around about her exploiting her daughter. Instead of addressing them, she brushed them aside, calling it funny and proudly saying that she and her daughter loved the attention that was coming from her growing following. But these answers shouldn't come as a shock to anyone who knows who Jenny's mom is. Back in 2020, Maria caught massive heat after she took then 13-year-old Jenny and a few of her friends on a trip to the Hype House. The Hype House was a content house known for personalities like Charlie D'Amelio, Addison Rae, and Lil Huddy. Their house was a large-scale mansion in Los Angeles, and Maria decided one day that she wanted to take a visit. But instead of asking for a tour, she decided that she was just going to break in. On June 12th, 2020, Chase Hudson, aka Little Huddy, took to Twitter to post this tweet where he talked about how a group of girls and their mother had broken into the Hype House and stole his clothes. The girls and the mother in question were none other than Jenny, her friends, and her mom, Maria. And to make matters worse, they didn't just trespass onto the property, they also filmed content inside. Maria shot several videos in different rooms of the Hype House, posting them onto her own personal Instagram and TikTok accounts. What she considered to be content would turn out to be incriminating evidence. After all this broke out to the public, Jenny posted a statement on her Instagram saying that she had obtained special permission from a caretaker at the Hype House to enter. This incident was what created many people's first impression of Jenny and her mother, and it wasn't a good one. To many, it seemed like Maria was encouraging questionable behavior with her daughter. Jenny was only 13 at the time when this all went down clearly in Cape capable of making proper decisions. Another major red flag was a viral video from Christmas 2021 that Jenny posted that featured her younger brother. There was a trend going around TikTok where couples would be dancing together with one person being covered in wrapping paper. The other partner would then spin them around and unwrap them, revealing a different outfit underneath. Often it was something revealing, and Jenny hopped on the trend. The suggestive outfits had already been a common part of Jenny's content, so that wasn't the biggest issue anymore. The real concern was that the person who was unwrapping her in the video was her very own brother and he was unwrapping her to reveal Jenny in a swimsuit underneath. Jenny decided to follow a trend where her brother unwraps her to reveal her swimsuit. It did not take a minute for TikTok to flag Jenny's video. At this point, there was no denying that Jenny needed guidance because clearly her parents weren't capable of doing the job. Since then, fans have started pointing out Maria's terrible parenting and attempted to understand why she was so determined to use her daughter in this way. One of the reasons was just how obsessed Maria seemed to be with not only her daughter's fame, but also Jenny herself. She is a 16 year old who is being basically exploited by her mom. Her mom is basically trying to live through her. And why do I say this? Take a look. Are you wearing my clothes? <laughs> what happened? Are you wearing my clothes? I've just been trying them on, like, what's, like, the problem? Did, I didn't make a problem. I'm just saying, like... I just said, are you wearing my clothes? Yeah, I've been Why trying... Why do you have to be rude all the time? To many, this seems like a classic case of a parent trying to live through their kids' experiences. Maria herself has openly admitted that she knew she would be famous one day and that her daughter is her destiny to obtain that fame. This could explain why she would go to such extreme lengths, such as forcing her to wear revealing clothing or dance provocatively just to get that fame she so badly desires. Jenny has since left TikTok, but she still makes content on YouTube and Instagram. This time, she's ditched the persona. Now using her real name, Rosalie Aritola, to post videos. And the content seems to be a bit better than before. However, her mother is still very much involved. Katie Sorensen. My children were the um, targets of attempted kidnap. Katie Sorensen went viral in 2020 after she posted a story time video on her Instagram account, Motherhood Essentials, about a terrifying experience that she had in a Michael's craft store in California. One that left her on edge and her viewers on the edge of their seats. She was shopping for necessities with her four-year-old son and one-year-old daughter, and after getting everything she needed, she and the kids headed towards the car in the parking lot. But 
but it wouldn't be a quick trip to the car as there would be one horrifying obstacle in the way. A couple that wanted to steal Katie's children. After escaping their grasp, Katie immediately called the Petaluma Police Department to report the incident as an attempted kidnapping. A week after the report, she went and retold this story on Instagram. Katie claimed that she made this video to raise awareness of kidnappings and to remind parents to keep a close eye on their children at all times. When they walked kind of close behind me, I definitely felt the heebie-jeebies. I didn't feel good, but I thought I was judging a book by its cover. Also saying they, quote, weren't clean-cut individuals and made comments about her kid's appearance. They're saying blonde hair, blue eyes. The video instantly blew up with countless concerned viewers in the comments wanting to know more. The video ended up getting 4 million views, which for a smaller creator like Katie was a stepping stone to a prosperous social media career. But while many people believe the story online, there was one unexpected twist. It was all a lie. And that while there was a couple near Katie and her children at Michael's, the couple did not commit the crime that Katie was describing. The police were quick to expose the truth behind the video after reviewing CCTV footage of the parking lot, which did not support Katie's story at all. In fact, the couple she accused were fully cooperative with the investigation and were quick to clear their name against the false allegations. I'll say the investigation has produced no evidence or witnesses corroborating the account provided by Sorensen. Evidence gathered has served to support the account provided by the couple from the store. From this incident, Katie not only lost social media followers, but also her freedom. The momfluencer Katie Sorensen learning her sentence for falsely claiming a couple tried to kidnap her kids. Katie was sentenced to 30 days in jail and 60 days of work release for making a false report of a crime, along with 12 months of probation where she was not allowed to use social media. Zakiah Duncan. Zakiah Duncan seemed like your average mom on social media. She didn't have a huge following, but she did regularly post content, mostly with her kids. In videos, you could see her dancing and laughing with them inside their beautiful home in Texas. But appearances can be deceiving, especially in Zakiah's case. Underneath that big, happy family facade, those kids were living in a house of horrors, and it was so bad that two of her kids actually had to run away from home. New surveillance video shows the twins going to a neighbor's home early yesterday morning begging for help. Police soon got involved and that's when the twins mother and her boyfriend fled with their five other children sparking that Amber Alert. Turns out Zakai's life wasn't as perfect as social media made it seem. The twins who were the eldest of the kids weren't being taken care of at home. They were always locked inside a room underfed and dehydrated. They would only get sandwiches made of mustard and relish once or twice a week and when they did have something to drink it wasn't nutritious. The twins weren't allowed to to leave that room or allowed to participate in the TikTok videos that their mom made. Online, Zakaya took on the persona of a family-oriented, loving mother and constantly posted videos like this with her five kids. Family time is always the best time, so get your family time in, you guys, always. Come here. Family time is the best time? You love your family? Love your family. She would post all of this while the twins were fending for themselves in the other room. While it's unclear why Zakaya had such a preference for the other five kids, this sort of behavior wasn't new. 10 years ago, she'd also gotten similar charges. After the twins were able to free themselves and get help, police began looking for the couple. They attempted to run away with the rest of the kids, which sent a statewide Amber Alert for Zakaya's five kids who were aged seven to 14. They were all eventually found in Baton Rouge. Zakaya was charged for what she had done to the twins. However, the children were ultimately returned to her. Tiffany Raquel Smith. Piper Smith is arguably one of the most famous teen YouTubers today. Ever since she joined the platform in 2016, she's earned over 11.9 million subscribers and 3 billion channel views. She posted what any regular teen influencer would, challenges, skits, and other lifestyle content. But all of Piper's popularity can't be credited to her. Piper's channel is managed by her mother, <laughs> Tiffany Raquel Smith. Many of her videos also feature her content group, The Squad, which consists 
consists of other teen creators who were all Piper's friends, some of which were already well known. Tiffany oversaw a lot of the content being created for Piper's channel and acted as not only a guardian, but also a mother figure for a lot of the squad. At least that's what it looked like on camera. But the truth was far from that. This young lady's amassed more than 10 million followers on YouTube shooting silly videos with her friends. Now Lisa Guerrero reports some of those now former friends and their parents are suing, alleging they were exploited. A 147 page complaint was filed in January of 2022 and had 11 of Piper's friends involved, each suing for emotional distress and other mistreatment from Tiffany between the years of 2017 and 2022 when they worked for her. Each kid and their parent is suing for an estimated $2 million each, bringing the total to $22 million. Three young kids as young as nine. So yeah, a lot of these allegations, frankly, they are very Grotesque. Behind the scenes, Tiffany wasn't just giving guidance, she was pulling the strings. And when it comes to Piper's channel growth, she'd found one strategy that she believed always worked, even if it wasn't the best for the kids involved. Tiffany would treat the squad members as if they were actors, giving them roles and fake crushes so that she could pair them up to create ships and drama that would pull in the views. This not only strained relationships between the teens themselves, but also opened the window for hate online since certain fans only supported certain pairings. But even after generating billions of views for Piper's channel, none of the members of the squad ever got credit for all the energy and time they put into the videos. While Piper had almost 12 million subscribers, none of them ever got close to her level of popularity, even though they were putting in just as much work. And they never got paid either. Although it's unconfirmed whether or not they were promised money in the first place or just publicity, but even then, their personal careers also suffered at the hands of none other than Tiffany herself. The complaint that was filed claimed that Tiffany had conspired to ruin the channels of the members of the squad by using bots and falsely reporting their videos to drive down their views and growth so that they would not outshine Piper. The complaint also touched on other issues like the comments and actions that Tiffany had done over the years. Despite the ages of the squad members, Tiffany regularly said things that she shouldn't have to them particularly to the male members. But if you thought this sort of treatment was only restricted to the squad members, that would be false because Tiffany also exploited her own daughter Piper. One of the worst instances which was outlined in the complaint was when Tiffany took some of Piper's undergarments and mailed them to an unknown individual. And when her daughter confronted her about this, Tiffany just said that the person likes to smell this stuff. Tiffany has since tried to counter sue for 30 million, saying the mothers of the Piper Piper's squad members were trying to extort her, but this case was dropped almost immediately. Piper and the ex-members of the squad continue to regularly post on their YouTube channels or other social media platforms. My friends, let these stories be a reminder that on social media, it's almost never as it seems. There's always more than meets the eye. So keep your eyes peeled. Visual Venture. Thanks a ton to War Thunder. Play it for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox now by using my link below. New and returning players that haven't played in six months across all platforms will get a massive bonus pack. Wait, before you go, make sure you guys click subscribe here and then click this playlist to watch more dark internet documentaries because our goal is 700,000 subscribers by the end of 2024. Thank you guys for everything. Peace.